Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. I'm Belgia. Let's get to it. Mr. Marston, sir. John Marston. Mr. Marston, don't be so childish. Come on, sir, I implore you. Okay, 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 so I made a few innocent mistakes when last we met. But my plan is still sound. Together we can conquer, if not the world, then certainly Bill Williamson. But first, you need me to do you a favor? <laughs> you read my mind. I can only deduce you have been taking my tonic, sir, as instructed. It can give the most ordinary of intelligences a remarkable insight. I'll give you insight. I'll show you what your guts look like. Please, sir, this show of petulance is nothing short of embarrassing. Think for a moment, sir. Think. I'm thinking about how much of my time you're wasting. <laughs> um, sir. Sir. I am about to do something. Which I greatly discourage in all wise and rational men. A selfless act. For you. But, sir, before I act selflessly, Allow me to act selfishly and sell some of my wares. Fair enough. Oh, good, sir. Come, and let's go visit some of our fine friends in the other oil business we have here in Plainview. These men need all the help they can get. Is Westerkin's really going to try this again? Let's hope I don't have to shoot two hats this time, or something. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round, gather round. Friends, hardworking souls of uh, Plainview, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article which cures headache, neuralgia, uh, toothache, earache, backache, swelling. This man is a fucking charlatan. He just got done swindling us down at Cho Springs with this song and dance. I say we tar and feather him right now. I say we shoot the uh, bastard. I think it's time to take a business elsewhere. Uh, I apologize if science is not your forte. Good day, one and all. Well, that went just about as well as expected. St. Homobonus has not been looking down on me favorably. Who? Homobonus is Nathan St. Business. I'd say he's giving you your just search. No! Tommy Cock, those inmates were clearly informed of my refund policy. You can only shit on people for so long before they decide it's their turn to pull down the pants. A crude metaphor in every sense of the word, my dear boy. You leave the business to me. Do I try to tell you how to rob banks? Robin banks felt more honest than this. So here we are. Instead of racing for money, we're racing for our lives. Luckily, these guys aren't too difficult to pick off if you start aiming early enough. Good shot! The enemies are infinitely spawning until you reach a certain destination, so it's just a matter of waiting out the waves. Watch it, John! There's more of them! I love this mission because you can get some really good shots in. Well, it looks like the global expansion of your West Indian elixir might have come across. Just another from Bunny Science's Rocky Road. I bet Lewis Pastor did have to deal with this ship. Oh my good god, they blocked the road! <laughs> 
That was precisely aimed, and not a lucky shot at all. Nope, nope. I totally noticed that TNT there. For a man of the people, you sure ain't very popular. I am up against the weight of plebeian ignorance, my boy. Keep that gun at the ready, my dear boy. Maybe you need to think about a change of career. I will never... these people harbor such bitterness? Well, I ain't surprised. That tonic I drank at Ridgewood went through me like a dose of salt. about the horses is that they'll leave the road if you shoot their riders. Saves any glitches in West Dickens driving. I'm not sure we're out of the woods yet. Manual aim from a moving cart sucks. What do yokels like you? We made it, John. There's Quavaseca up ahead. My dear boy, you saved the day again. It always impresses me with the speed with which a group of men can turn from passive sheep into murderous wolves. I'm impressed with how you nearly got us killed back there. Well, yes, uh, perhaps we should shell the tonics business for a period. Let's say we try our hand at racing again. There's a meet at Rathskeller. You're trying my patience, Mr. West Dickens. Well, I'm sorry, dear boy, but I'm only an aging vendor of exotic elixirs, not the bloody U.S. Cavalry. And forgive me if matters take some time to prepare. <sighs> Mr. West Dickens! Ah, Mr. Marston! How wonderful to see you, sir. How wonderful. Are we ready, then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, nearly, sir. Barely nearly, sir. I just need some cash to get some extra hardware fitted to my old Trojan horse here. You, you what? <laughs> Never mind, sir. I can only presume that you have not enjoyed the benefits of a classical education, so I will not take umbrage if some of my illusions sail over your head, sir. I won't pretend to understand you, but I will endeavor to make you understand me. Either we do this right now, or I put a bullet in you and get on with my day. Please, I knew you were a violent man, Mr. Marston, but I did not think you were a stupid one. We need money to outfit my carriage, to turn a simple tradesman's vehicle into something more subterfuge. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you how we are going to gain said cash. Now I know that you ride very well. So come, sir, to Rathskeller Fork. <laughs> Let's go, my dear boy! I'll show you the way! So not only is he making us race again, he bloody left without us as well. Oh well, let's get on a horse. Well, how are you, John? Okay, all things considered, hopefully we can get through today without running into another army of your satisfied customers. 
Onwards and upwards! I refuse to let the blind stupidity of the proletariat derail my calling in life. Nothing blind about it. I'd say they saw right through you. Ah, uh, before knowledge comes doubt, my dear boy. Everybody knows you're as crooked as a dog's hind leg, Wes Dickens. I resent that implication, John. I wasn't implying. I was telling. If you're such a successful businessman, what are you doing living in a cave? Delightful Dickensian, isn't it? If you say so. Are you familiar with the concept of philanthropy, John? I'm surprised you are. Oh, I don't do any of this for myself, John. I hope you realize that. You're crazy, old man. You seem to be forgetting that I've been part of your ridiculous charade. <laughs> it's been quite a ride, John, hasn't it? We haven't gone that far. No, I mean us. Bridgewood Farm, Gap Tooth Reach, Find you. We make quite a team, you and me. Brains and brawn. We should consider a more permanent partnership. This partnership ends as soon as I have Bill Williamson. I appreciate your help, but I've just about had it with all your schemes. You need to realize what's at stake here. I know, John, I know. Just win this race and we'll be ready. I give you my word. Come on! Well, we're here at Rascal of Fork. It's time to race. Properly this time. Gentlemen, this will be a fair race. No shooting, stabbing, cliff pushing, rock throwing, cactus grinding, neck lassoing, setting fires, or other acts that causes a rider to unfairly lose his weight or bleed heavily or black out. Get yourselves ready. Set. Go. Get your, get your. This race is a little challenging. It would have been easier if someone didn't accidentally shoot and then skin and sell that horse that we got from the bunny mission. But what can you do? We got no chance! The key to winning these races is to get an early lead. But that doesn't happen here. It's a shame we can't kill these guys either. Starting to build up a little lead, but this horse's stamina just isn't the same. Let's go. You have to be careful on these narrow paths as well. Veering off onto the bush is a good way to end up lagging behind. Talk about a close race. Thankfully I haven't screwed up at all or we'd be in big trouble.
king, he saw, he conquered. <laughs> what a fantastic spectacle, John. Let's take a moment to bask in the glory of our victory. Have we got enough money now? All right, all right, all right. Uh, yes, once Seth and Irish have furnished their side of the bargain, I think we should be ready. Quite a team we've assembled, don't you think? A bunko, a grave robber, and a drunk. How could things possibly go wrong? Well, we've got Seth and Wes Dickens on board. Now it's time to get that gun off Irish. Get away from me! Right here. Where's that machine gun, Irish? Oh, Mr. Marston. I, I found you one. Found us one, Irish. We're in this together. You, me, and an assault on Fort Mercer. I'm the guy that saved you from getting killed back there, and who you owe your life to, remember? <laughs> Not really. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> you don't want it to happen to you again, do you, Irish? Uh, no, friend. I wants to buy you a drink. I, I wants to tell you how much she means to me, how special he is. And I want to tell you that if you don't produce a Gatling gun within the hour, you'll wish you'd been killed back there. <laughs> it's the whiskey, sir. Uh, it gives me the memory of a newborn babe, as innocent as can be. Yeah. And it makes me violently angry. Shall we go look for that gun, sir? <laughs> yes. Let's do that. Uh. Not a feller to give up easily, are you? I appreciate the approach John's taking with Irish. Some people need a good shove to get things done. Yeah! I love me faithless Flora, the lily of the west. You're not gonna pass out on me, are you, Irish? <laughs> me? No! Right is red. <laughs> or at least somewhere stuck between fair and meddling. Well, you're gonna be stuck somewhere between dying and dead if you try to cross me again. It weren't like that at all, fella. My intentions were pure. I swear it on me poor mother's life. I just get a tad confused from time to time. Honest mistake. If there's any more confusion, I'll finish what your friends in Armadillo started. Jesus! You're an impatient bastard, aren't you? Where's the gun, Irish? I hear some miners been blabbing about a machine gun they found. Apparently, they got it stashed up at Gap Tooth Breach. What do miners want with a machine gun? Shoot it at somebody, I suppose? Or sell it? I don't know. I've never been down a mine in all my life. Sounds real fishy to me, Irish. I've just about had it with you and your game. You and Wes Dickens are so crooked, you can swallow nails and spit out corkscrews. Maybe if you was more cordial with folks, they might be better inclined to help you. I saved your life, and you repaid me by lying, nearly getting me killed. Not far now, Johnny. We should go around the side of Gap Tooth so the miners don't see us coming. I still don't know what miners would want with a machine gun. Miners are always fighty bastards. Spend too long without daylight and doxies, and it starts playing with your mind. I never heard so much shit come out of one mouth. Only telling you what I heard. Oh, and we'll need a wagon or something to get it out of there. That gun's heavier than sin. So how was I supposed to move it by myself last time? You two-faced little bastard. Stop, damn it. Here we are. Let's stop here a moment to get a lie of the land. The entrance is plain to see, and there's a shaft them bastards used to haul out heavy ore. We, I mean you, 
can use that lift to get you and the gun to the surface. I do it all myself, but the mines play havoc with me sinuses. I'll find us a fine place to hide these horses, and then return with a borrowed flat wagon. I'll meet you at the mouth of the mine shaft. And Irish, I strongly advise you don't run off this time. You're trespassing. State your business or move along. My business is death. Here's my card. <laughs> My inability to use Dead Eye aside, this is one of my favourite missions. It's just so fun. I need to get into that mine shaft on the right. It's a bit hard with all these guys around though. I really need to stop relying on the auto-aim. It makes me look stupid sometimes. We're going into the mine. It's a bit closer range, so maybe this shotgun will be useful. On second thoughts, I don't have enough ammo. There's lots of TNT around though, so I'll just use my trusty Winchester. It's great for killing zombies. That TNT explosion missed that guy. Bugger. You can also shoot lanterns to make them explode, at the cost of a slight decrease in visibility. What the hell is this?
Oh, shit. That TNT blast hurt me as well. a really poor line of sight here. I'm practically a sitting duck. Now for the fun bit. Stupid hills. I want to go down, not up. <laughs> I thought I'd be looking at your corpse being hauled up this lift. Load up and I'll engage the gears. He is. What a beautiful weapon. God's own gun. Ain't that the truth? I got us a borrowed flat to park down below. Don't let go of her. She's a beast. Yes. Gonna mine this mechanic for all it's worth. Jesus, my puns are awful. Oh yeah. And we'll have this executive peacemaker delivered to Old West Dickens. Just make sure it doesn't fall off on the way. Well, that's enough fun card adventures for the moment. I'll see you next time. Strange things are afoot. <laughs>